Hi, today we are going to do a crown preparation with a special brief on temporary crown placement. Today's case is a PFM crown with ceramic facing on 2-4. These are the most basic and essential burrs that you will require. From your left on, the first is the torpedo burr. The second is the round and tapered burr. The fourth is the long needle burr. The fifth is a short needle burr. The sixth and seventh are the same and they are the flat and tapered burrs. The eighth is a pear shaped burr and the ninth is the finishing burr. Make an impression prior to crown preparation and pour it in dental stone. Make an index using putty elastomer. The cast that you obtain is the diagnostic cast. Pour the mandibular impression in dental stone. As it is not going to be subjected for casting, it is merely for a reference purpose. The occlusal reduction of a root canal treated 2-4 can be done with a flat and tapered burr or a round and tapered burr. The buckle reduction, however, is using a flat and tapered burr only. The palatal reduction must be done with a torpedo burr. Proximal reduction is initially using a needle point burr to break the contact, followed by a winged preparation with a shoulder finish line meeting a chamfer finish line. Use a finishing burr to smoothen the preparation. Provide a functional cusp bevel. In this case, it is a maxillary tooth, so the palatal cusp, but in mandibular functional cusp is lingual cusp. Make an impression using alginate or elastomer and pour the cast in dental stone. Take the previously made patti index and place it over the cast of the prepared crown to check its fit. Apply Vaseline over the area where the index fits and specially all over the preparation on the cast. Choose a shade of acrylic using a shade guide and mix it. Once dough stage is attained, gather the material. Roll the resin into a ball and place it on the tooth of interest in the index and then press it down onto the cast with a prepared tooth. Once the material has set, Remove the index and carefully tease out the temporary crown not to fracture it. Trim the excess and shape the crown with care not to obliterate the finish line. Place the crown onto the prepared tooth and check for the fit again. Use an articulating paper to check for high points which reveals the occlusal di disturbances after cross-checking with the patient's comfort accordingly. Recheck the crown properly prior to cementation. Remove excess temporary cement and inspect the crown thoroughly. Once the temporary crown is cemented, the work on permanent crown is started. Additional impressions of the prepared tooth is poured in dye stone for maxilla. The metal coping, however, is made in the lab and it is obtained at this point. During the metal try-in, check for high points using an articulating paper. Trim the high points using carborundum burr and recheck in the patient's mouth. In case of any gross changes, resend it to the lab. During shade selection, use the shade guide to pick the right shade for the ceramic facing crown. Once the ceramic has been layered onto the facial surface of the crown, it appears like this. Place the 
crown in the patient's mouth and check for high points with an articulating paper. Trim the high points if any. Again, for gross changes, resend it to the lab. Post glazing, the ceramic and polished metal appearance is this. Load glass ionomer cement and apply it all around the walls and cement it in place. Be sure of the path of insertion. Ask the patient to bite tightly onto a cotton roll and once the GIC sets, remove the excess. This is how the cemented crown will look. Thank you for watching my video. If you've really liked it, please do subscribe to my channel.